This is Rovaniemi, the heart of Lapland, but few know this town was completely destroyed by the Germans in World War II, where once were traditional wooden houses, today stand uninspiring concrete buildings. But I was amazed to discover that one wooden house survived. So I booked it, because it was on Airbnb. Should we go check it out? We've just arrived in Rovaniemi, capital of the Lapland region of Finland. Before we check into that beautiful wooden house, let's go check out the city. Rovaniemi is a very popular place to come with kids at Christmas time. For anyone coming without kids or solo travellers, it feels like a massive tourist trap. I've come in November and it's a lot quieter, but yeah, right now it's full of spoiled brats. That's the humbug in me talking anyway. Hello. Hello, Marit. Yes. <laughs> Such a beautiful house. Uh -huh. Okay, this is a 100 years because it all got knocked down in World War II, I understand. Yes, yes, and yeah. Lapland War. So how come this house survived the war? The leader. Finnish. He in his house. The Finnish ones? No. The, the German? It's Germany, yeah. All the other houses in this street were destroyed? Oh, in... oh, yes, every ho house is Oh, is crazy. It's important to close the door, people they look this house and maybe try to come in. And then we take the shoes in here. We go to very high. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's top floor. Yeah. yeah. Each floor is a different yes. apartment. Here, yes, here is one and here is one. This is yours. When things went south in Lapland, where we are now, the Germans were forced out and on their way out they destroyed much of this town, Rovaniemi. All the buildings on this street were destroyed in one way or another, except for this one, apparently due to the links with the Germans that used to occupy it. But right here we are in the attic. Who knows who would have been here before in the early 20th century? Maybe German soldiers would have come out of this door here to smoke a cigarette and wondered about their fate as the war drew to an end. I'm interested to find out a bit more about Rovaniemi and Lapland during World War II. There's a museum just down the road, so let's head down, check it out and see what else we can learn. The lady that owns this house said that apparently this used to be a, a shelter for women and children. It's in the garden of the, of the house, so presumably if there were ever any air raids, they would come down here and seek shelter. And there's a chimney on top, so if it was winter, I guess they could make a fire to keep warm in there. As we walk down this street towards the museum, let's just compare this traditional wooden house with the other kinds of houses on this street. It's a concrete house, it's a brick apartment block, another brick building, another brick apartment block, modern house, apartment blocks made of brick, concrete apartment blocks. I think you get the point I'm trying to make. That house I'm staying in really is the only surviving traditional wooden house in this area. It's crazy. Well, we don't have to go far. Literally at the end of the street is this amazing museum in terms of the building. It's called Articum. Uh, can you tell me whether you have any exhibitions about World War II in Lapland? We have a provincial museum in Lapland that is about history, local history. Kitos. I 
think this scale model of Robin Yemi before and after shows the impact of the war when 548 houses, 96 shops and nine municipal buildings were destroyed. If we look closely at this model of destroyed Robin Yemi, it's over here in this area that that house I'm staying in is. That's where I'll be sleeping tonight. Well, I think the fact that the Finnish managed to rebuild the whole of Rovaniemi after World War II is testament to their resilience. Even if it's not the prettiest city ever, I am going to try to struggle up this snowy slope and get back to my wooden house and try to get some sleep in a bedroom where probably World War II German soldiers once slept. See you in the next one.